Salutations, I'm Ruby Mattis and welcome back to another episode of Talking Cookies. Today we'll be talking cookies and we'll be talking Mr. Mepham with Mr. Mepham hosts Dom Casella and Brendan Moran. We will also be chatting with James Bickham, otherwise known as just Bickham, who has helped me bake this month's batch of cookies. Oh, bright ideas and an Oreo cookie. It's a bright idea to dunk it or to crunch it or to... <laughs> Way back when BC, before COVID, Mr. Meppen was one of the highlights of the year. It featured students and teachers alike strutting their stuff and showing off their talents to win the title of Mr. Meppen. The show also featured student hosts, and joining me right now on the cookie couch are this year's hosts, Dom Casella and Brendan Moran. So welcome and thanks so much for being here. It's great to be here. Thank you very much for having us. Of course, anytime. So are you more excited to talk cookies or to talk Mr. Meppen? I think Dom's more excited about the cookies than I am, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm excited to talk about Mr. Meppham because it's a great way to get everybody from school together and just pretty much everybody have a good laugh, have a great time. All right, awesome. So one of the perks of hosting a show about cookies is that we get to eat cookies while we talk. This month we'll be talking Swiss fudge cookies, so before we eat them, let's take a look at how they were made. Almond Thumbert Cookies. The ingredients are one cup all-purpose flour, three quarters cup almond meal, one stick of unsalted butter, and one quarter cup granulated sugar, finely grated zest from one small lemon, one teaspoon of pure vanilla extract, four ounces bittersweet chocolate broken into small pieces, two teaspoons or light corn syrup, free oven to 350 degrees, in a small bowl whisk together all-purpose flour and almond meal. In another small bowl, combine lemon zest with sugar with the tips of your fingers. Rub the zest and sugar together until they are well integrated. Combine the butter and sugar zest mixture in the bowl of a stand or hand mixer. Beat them together on medium speed until light and fluffy. Add the vanilla extract and beat for a few more seconds. Then add almond meal flour mixture a little at a time. Mix together thoroughly. thoroughly. Beat scoop teaspoon sized balls of dough and roll them to form small balls. Place the balls about two inches apart on the parchment lined baking sheet. Using your thumb, bake an indention of the center of each cookie. Bake about 15 minutes or until the cookies are slightly colored around the edges. When done, remove the baking sheets from the oven and transfer the cookies to cooling racks. To make chocolate filling, use double boiler or a small heat-proof bowl. Set over a pot of simmering water. Combine chocolate, two teaspoons of butter, and golden syrup. Stir until melted and smooth. Cool slightly. When the cookies are cool, fill the thumbprints with the chocolate allow about an hour for the chocolate centers to set. Enjoy. Those look quite appetizing, right? So let's dig in. Uh, you first. Or whomever wants to go first. Coffee yep. one. You want one too? Oh, thank you. Please thank you, Cookie. All right. Cheers. Mmm. Your gas. That's really good. I fire. Who made these? Um, I did, and so did Bickham. You guys did a great job. Yeah, pretty good. Thank you very much. I'm Same time next week. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sounds good. So, on the topic of cookies, do you have a favorite type of cookie, and how do you typically eat your cookies, like with milk, without milk? My favorite type is rainbow cookies. My grandma used to make them, but now she just buys them from a bakery. They used to be so good. Rainbow cookies are my favorite too, and if I had to choose a second one, probably chocolate chip cookies, but they have to be soft. Can't, no hard chocolate chip cookies. Got it. Noted. No hard chocolate chip cookies. Um, but enough about cookies. Let's talk about Mr. Meppham. For those who don't know, what exactly is Mr. Meppham? So Mr. Meppham is like a male beauty pageant where you get to be yourself, show off what you can do, and just overall have a fun time with your classmates and people in your school. All right, sounds like a lot of fun. When is the competition taking place this year? Uh, it's on February 17th. It is a Thursday night. All right, sounds good. I'll definitely be there. Um, what do you think are the key qualities of a Mr. Meppham winner? 
I think the key qualities of Mr. Meppen winner, you have to be obviously very talented. People will vote for you. And I think you have to have looks similar to mine and Dom's. Um, you're not going to get as good as us, but um, you, you have to be up there, you know? You just have to really look the part. All right, got it. Take a note. Um, as the host, what are you going to do to make this year's Mr. Meppen competition the most exciting, thrilling, and eventful one yet? We're just going to be ourselves and just let everybody else have a good time around us because if we have a good time, then everybody else is going to have a good time. Exactly. Like, I mean, Dom did his comedy routine one time for Mr. Meppham, and it was actually really good. I think my material is better, but um, we'll see how it turns out. All right, I can't wait to see. Um, in 50 words or less, tell people why they should come to see Mr. Meppham this year. They should come and see Mr. Meppham this year because it's just overall, it's just a real fun event that people get to, like I said, be themselves and just have a lot of fun. It's, it really is. It's a good time for everybody to just come out and just have a lot of fun. All right. Uh, full disclosure, I wasn't keeping track if that was 50 words or less, but I'll assume it fit the criteria. Um, and just between you and me, who do you guys think is going to win this year? Uh, I'm really pulling for my, sh my boy, Sean. Yeah. really hope Sean comes out on top this year. We want Sean Cates to take the chip. All right, rooting for Sean. So thanks so much again for joining me, Dom and Brendan, and make sure you come by later this month to see who will take the crown at this year's Mr. Meppham competition. Now, on to the next segment. <coughs> Question, what is traditionally round, delicious, and starts with a C? No, it's not a circle. It's a cookie, of course. Let's see what other trivia questions are in store for us in this month's Smart Cookie segment. <coughs> Hi, I'm Ethan Diaz. I'm with the Mepham Quiz Bowl, and one of the typical questions that we could ask would be something like this. Uh, this 20th president of the United States was assassinated in 1881 by Charles Guiteau. He was born in Ohio. Who is this United States president? Now, it is time to welcome the man, the myth, and the Shakira fan, James Bickham, to the set of Talking Cookies. Welcome, Bickham. Thanks for having me, Ruby. It's great to be here. I know, and it's great to listen to Shakira as well, I'm sure. Normally, I would ask the guests about the cookies, but since I was the one who found this recipe and wanted to bake them in the first place, I suppose I shall do the explaining. These were supposed to be January's cookies, in honor of my grandpa, who thoroughly enjoyed the Stella Dora Swiss Fudge cookies. His birthday was in January, so I wanted to bake our rendition of them for last month's episode, but life happened, and we baked them in February instead. Now that the origin story is out of the way, let's dig in. You first. Okay. Here's one for you, Ruby. Oh, merci, as they say in French. Cheers. Oh, or Cheers. just <laughs> eat it without my permission. That's fine. Cheers. Go ahead. Che fine. There. Oh. There. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. I assume you like it? Good. He's speechless. He can't even just convey in words how much he likes it. I will take that as a good sign. All right. Are, are you capable of speaking now? No, I am, yes. No. <laughs> you just said <laughs> no. I said now. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hopefully I can be capable of speaking too. Um... So, Bickham, what is your favorite variety of cookie? My favorite variety of cookie is actually chocolate chip. My grandmother always makes these chocolate chip cookies when we go upstate. It's about a seven-hour car ride. And it's, like, really nice to always have those cookies ready. And even if I approach a cookie that is better, which actually better, which I have yet to encounter, those would still sentimentally be my favorite. That's a very nice answer. Very sweet, like cookies. Haha, <laughs> funny. Um, what was your favorite part about baking these cookies? Uh, my favorite part was just uh, doing it with a friend because let's face it, I don't, I didn't even know what a lemon zester was. You did not know what a lemon zester was. was. So, so I needed someone there to like make it more entertaining because on my own I would not have been able to like you know successfully do this. Right, what would you have done if I wasn't there? How would you have zested the lemon? I would have used the cheese grater that we used. I would, would have still used the cheese grater. Would you have known to use the cheese grater? 
Yeah, I would have known because I would have Googled how to zest a lemon. But it would say actually, with a lemon zester, not a cheese grater. Well, and you didn't I know what a lemon zester do. was. No, I didn't. I thought lemon zest was actually not the skin. I thought it was like the juice from the lemon. That's lemon juice, Vickum. It, it's in the, the phrase. I didn't know that's what it meant. All right. Well, you learn something new every day. Um, so are you proud of how they turned out, um, even though when you dropped on the floor? Yes, I am proud of how they turned out. And yeah, one dropped on the floor, so what? That's life. Yeah, but, but we could have had 15. Yeah, we could have had 15, but 14's fine. All right, I suppose it is. Um, enough about cookies. Let's talk about BFB. So what broadcasting job do you enjoy the most? Well... As for the fact that I'm barely on camera, you guys can obviously tell it's not on camera. I'm not, like, I like it on occasion, but that's fun. But I really like to technical direct, direct, and edit. Uh, technical directing is very technical and switching all the cameras around. It's just a lot of fun. Directing is basically telling everyone what to do. So, you know, control, power. And uh, editing is a lot of fun because it's after the fact. And, like, you get to look back at all the footage and you kind of get to take a little bit of time with it. Now, not always, because sometimes because there are deadlines, but you still get to like you know take time and make sure everything's perfect. You don't have to panic. All right. The only thing I took away from that was control and power. <laughs> so, um, good to know. Uh, what are some of your fondest broadcasting memories besides dancing to the superior rendition of "I Heard It Through the Grapevine," sung by the infinitely talented California Raisins? Um, I can't think of anything. Sp specific on top of my head but like you know a lot of the stuff that we did last year and this year but a lot of the stuff that we did with the seniors last year that like that was a fun group like all of us together was like a really awesome group I missed that entirely I remember like there were things over like uh Sean who always had his water bottle like you know we would joke around with it not in a bullying way he would joke around with our stuff too but like we had a lot of fun with stuff like that you know and I really just missed that gang and I wish that we go all be together again, even though this, like, you know, the gang is very similar to what it was last the year. The gang? Well, we're the B&B &B gang. They're, we're the BM gang. What gang? else do you want? The, yes. The, the, the BMB crew? Crew works too, but I like the word gang. Gang, but that's like... No, but it's not, 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 not that kind of <laughs> gang. Not that kind of gang at all. All right. Got it. Cool. BMB &B gang, not crew. Noted <laughs> in my brain of notes. Um, what's something important that you're taking to, to, oh, you, not your, um, I can read. What's something important that you've taken away from your experience in the program? Um, something important that I've taken away is that you have to be, well, two things actually, is that you have to be patient and you have to be able to work with other people. Because if you're not able to like, you know, work with others and be patient with them, you really can't get anywhere in life because we, in this life, we're only good, our only help is other people. And like without them, we're help, we're completely helpless, we're alone, and there's nothing we can do. You really need to learn how to work with people and how to be patient with them. That was very philosophical of you. Thank you. <laughs> I, I, I'm very notorious for it, I, apparently. You become the prophet. Or the scholar, I don't think. <laughs> Scholar, yes, that not profit. Um, yes, and lastly, the question we've all been waiting for, if you would want the drum roll. All right, what is your favorite Shakira song? Oh, so, all right, so I'm not a big Shakira fan, but I must say, Hips Don't Lie, really? regrettingly. Yes, Hips really. If, if I had to pick from all those songs, I would say the one I would, that would be least painful to hear would be Hips Don't Lie. Really, not whenever, wherever? You don't like the yodeling? Little, <laughs> little. <laughs> that, was, that was a good impression, right? That was a good impression. <laughs> I've seen you go on for like five minutes with Stein. And I know, him we doing had a competition. Boxer. I won. Yeah, boxer. you did. Yeah, the boxer by Simon and Garfunkel. That's oh, I thought you meant like I was a, it was like a boxer. No, that's a very famous song. I was like, we did not have a boxing competition. No, no, we yodeled, and I'm the superior yodeler, in case anyone was wondering. Um, yes. Yeah, you are. Yes, thank you, well, thank you. Who else is to compete, really? Right, exactly. No one, because no one else is as passionate about yodeling as I am, apparently. 
Well, other than the yodel and kid from Walmart. <laughs> oh, I forgot that existed. <laughs> that did exist, didn't it? Well, I still think I'm better. Yeah. I should just sing Shakira for all of Walmart's customers one day. <laughs> they, they wouldn't want to hear that anyways. Um, enough about Shakira. Let's wrap up this very special, fun interview um, for Talking Cookies. It was very fun chatting with you, Bickham. Nice Had a good time. It's fun making cookies. I taught you what a lemon zester was. Um, that was important. Very important. I now know that. <laughs> Life skills, yes, with Ruby 101. Um, thank you all so much for watching, and I hope you all have a great day. We will see you on the next episode.